PC, accounting for your future. Okay, so the things that we're going to cover in this particular section is beyond budgeting. So, let me just turn that page to beyond budgeting here. So, the idea behind the beyond budgeting is this. From the business perspective, perhaps what you've planned uh, cannot cope with the changes that it uh, takes place. So, one of my examples I like to give my student is about my friend. So my friend um, thought that he would be the accountant when he graduated. Of course, when I was a student in the university, he's my friend. And he originally thought that he would be the accountant when he graduated. But after he graduated, he became an English teacher rather than the accountant. So that means he has spent lots of time to plan his career, to be the accountant, to sit for the ACC exams, for example. But actually, he turned out to be the English teacher, and that means what he planned before doesn't necessarily make sense. And also, you can argue that, for example, in, uh, for most of the companies in 2008, of course, they've budgeted to do quite a lot of things. But economic crisis happened, and of course, they have to abandon quite a lot of his plans that they originally thought. So that's the idea behind the Beyond Budgeting. So Beyond Budgeting said, instead of doing the traditional budget for those dynamic business environments companies, what they need to do is to keep an eye on to the external factors. So the external factors of what we just talked about, for example, when we used petrol analysis, the political factors, economic factors, etc. So Beyond Budgeting doesn't necessarily mean that the company should not do the budget. But rather, we should do the budget based upon the external environment. So that means, when we are talking about the beyond budgeting, we are doing the beyond budget based upon the rolling budget plus the key performance indicators. That's the idea behind it. So that means we should focus upon the external environment. And then to make sure that we are clear about those key performance indicators. And then we're going to row our budget forward based upon those key performance indicators. So for example, traditionally, you budget it to spend $5 to buy the raw material. And here's what you need to do from the control purposes you are going to compare that with the actual amount of money that you've spent in buying that raw material. For example, actually, you've spent $6 to buy that raw material. And as a result of it, there will be an adverse variance of $1, which means you spent, you spent $1 more to buy that raw material. Why this is the case? You have to explain that. So that's from the traditionalist perspective. But now, when using a beyond budgeting, for example, our aim for that is where we're going to buy the good quality material. So that means, first of all, we can set up the goal of what to do. And then, instead of just spending $5 to buy the raw material and then subsequently find out the raw material's quality is low, but we are not going to do that in the beyond budgeting, but rather we set up our goal is to buy the good quality material. And hence, we are going to benchmark that with the supplier. So benchmark against our competitors. For example, the competitor will spend an average of $6 to buy the raw material. And hence what we need to do then is perhaps that we've budgeted to spend $5 before that we've just listed in the management account. But now we're going to roll that forward, which means we're going to update that budget from 5 and then we say, no, we can't spend five because we need to spend six in order to arrive at the uh, goal. So that means we're going to spend six dollars to buy it. So we're going to row that forward. So that's the idea behind the Beyond Budgeting. So that means, as you can see, what we need to do is so we're going to revise, keep revising our budget. We need to keep an eye on to those key performance indicators 
particularly for those external factors. For example, political environment changes, for example, the economic environment changes, social environment changes, technological environment changes, and also legal environment changes, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's the beyond budgeting. So we can argue that there will be certain problems with the traditional budgeting. For example, the gaming. So that means perhaps the management within the business will overstate the sales revenue and understate the expenses in order to meet with the budget or budgeted profit that we are going to make. So and in some of the circumstances, for example, perhaps there will be the dysfunctional behaviours such as the budget slack. And that means we haven't spent up to the budget because we want to, uh, I mean, achieve the good performance in the next year by spending a little bit more, so budgeting slack, or perhaps the management, uh, I mean, would uh, do the functional behaviour, for example, of spending too much uh, on one particular item if we haven't got enough control over them. So gaming of the system with regards to tra traditional budgeting. I can also argue for the traditional budgeting, it's time consuming to put them together because first of all, we've got the functional budget and then secondly, we've got the master budget. And thirdly, we focus upon the cost reduction, not the value creation. For example, we budgeted to spend $5, actually that you spend $4, fine, good. But actually spend $6, for example, we spend $1 more so that we're going to punish you, for example. So we focus upon the cost only, but not the value creation. For example, we are not focusing on the cash flow that a company will get because we are not focusing on the external environment at all, perhaps, when setting up the budget. And that's the reason why we introduced the beyond budget. But the beyond budget would be used in a business where the environment is changing quite a lot. So if you are operating in the business environment where the business environment is static, which is not changing quite a lot, we cannot influence the beyond budgeting. So beyond budgeting, as I said, is the rolling budget based upon the key performance indicators uh, that we've set out. And the principles uh, or the rules, or perhaps you can say that the steps of implementing the beyond budgeting, I'm going to use mnemonic for this, it's called GRIPT. So let me just to point it out here. So GRIPT. So first of all, we need to set out our goals. As I previous example, we need to make sure that, for example, we buy the good quality materials rather than buying any materials that as long as it's cheap. We can't do that because if we buy the cheap quality material, surely we'll increase the quality cost later on. And secondly, resource allocation. So that means we will focus upon the operational staff. We will empower those operational staff because the operational staff is focusing on the operational activity. He or she is quite familiar with the operation that he's dealing with day to day. And hence, it's quite easy for those operational staff to come up with new ideas to exploit any other opportunity uh, that may come into being. So that's the reason why we need to also have the good IT system to deal with the changes as well. For example, as long as you've got an idea, that's absolutely fine. So uh, type that into the system and then allows the top management to implement that directly. So from that perspective then, what we need to do is to set out the detailed plan, but making sure that you're focusing on customers. Because for the beyond budgeting, what you need to do is we're going to focus upon the value creation rather than just the cost reduction. Because in the business environments that is changing all the time, for example, you can think about the IT companies, we've got different new products each and every year, for example, we emerged from the competitors. But if you stick to the previous plan, of course, your products would not be, uh, cannot compete with others quite easily. So that's the reason why you have to focus upon the customers when preparing your plans. And then finally, the team reward as well. So for the beyond budgeting, 
we encourage the workers to work together to come up with ideas. So that what we need to do is we're going to reward the teamwork rather than just a single person. That's very, very important stuff. Because if you reward the team, of course, the staff would group together and discuss with each other to generate into ideas by comparing with uh, different key KPIs, for example. So those are the gripped mnemonic to help you memorize when you are implementing the uh, beyond budgeting approach within your organization. Okay, I hope that's clear and we finish off the section for beyond budgeting. APC, accounting for your future.